Okay, so maybe you're recording something into Reaper and you're still not sure if you should be using lanes or comp lanes. Honestly, spoiler alert, there's not such a big difference, but I will show you a workflow that could benefit you the best thing of both worlds and you can just choose whatever suits best for you, especially if you're trying to record other people and they are paying for your time. It's important that you don't lose control of your session and you can always figure out what's going on. Let's get into it straight from Mexico City. My name is Juanchis and today I did this example. Whenever you're trying to figure out any new idea, probably what you will end up is something like this, like enough lanes. I know I overdid it. I did 19 lanes just because I was fiddling around. But this is messy. This is really, really messy. And you never want to deal with a comp like this. You can actually see when I was like rushing a little bit and I was going behind a little bit. Sometimes I was in time. But the whole point is to actually have a good example for us to make this video, right? So whenever you're handling only lanes, the benefit is that you can still cut easily either using split items on the cursor and select the left media item left. Or I also use a lot the split at previous zero crossing. That way I avoid clicks whenever I'm editing. So I'm using the move cursor to next transient in items. And remember that every single action that I say will be in the description down below. So don't go rushing trying to write everything down. So maybe I want to go around and change my grid. Remember that I'm using control command one and command two to adjust my grid, uh, command three to use set up triplets and command four to disabling my grid. So I can start going into quarter notes, eighth notes, whatever the editing needs. Maybe I just want to go into these two bars and maybe I want to go into these four versions of it so I can make the best out of it. So now I have four different bars from which I can still edit 19 options. So that's 76 versions of pretty much the same baseline. From there, what you could do is just left click and try and listen every single one of them. But this for me is honestly really obnoxious because I'm constantly messing this up. So I'm using this action, lock to active takes, mouse click will not change active take. That way, whenever I lock my lanes, it doesn't matter where I click. I can only change it using my T to move comp area to mouse down or switch items to next take. And I have the same action with shift plus T to go backwards. That way I can go up or I can go down. And now I can start selecting from one or the other or the other and start looking for the best take, right? Another thing that I will probably have to do whenever I'm working only with lens or that I can take advantage, advantage of if I'm still in the lanes version is that I can clean up the lanes that I really didn't use. So maybe this one wasn't finished. I can delete it because I'm deleting active take from items. Or you can just select all of them and I'm using remove all empty takes and I have it set up on my toolbar. And as you can see, it's helping me clean up faster or at least a little bit faster, whatever I wasn't using. And I could probably end up with something that looks a lot more something like this, because after you clean up, this is probably easier on the eyes as well. The only thing is that I still think it's kind of chaotic because you will probably have more takes in one bar or the other. So I'm also using this action, show all takes when room. That way I can just go into one single media item per track. It's more or less the same idea of the free item positioning, but you're looking at all of the takes and you can still switch from one take to another by just clicking and hitting your shortcuts on your keyboard to start figuring out what's the best comp of the idea. And that actually works. Like that's the way most Reaper users have done it for a while now. But whenever we take advantage of the comp lanes, what we will usually do is go figure out where to right click things when recording and how to set up the comp lane. So I'm going to use explode takes and this is the one and add comp areas to from active takes, right? So whenever I do this, it's going to create a lot of comp lanes and it's going to create this one at the top. That's the actual comp lane. And I get my mouse to become this small like pen or whatever that I can just select the takes from. And once I have selected my comp, because this is more or less faster, once I finished it, everything is locked in place when I right click and show only play lane because this is my comp lane. 
it's a different way instead of going into your keyboard and trying to figure out what's going on everywhere. You could also just remove all of the parts of the lanes that you are not using. And you can also clean up all of this empty space at the bottom by right clicking and using the delete lanes with no media items. And it's going to clean it up really nice. And now you can do like as something easier on the eyes. And I think this looks a bit better because if we compare the top version versus the bottom version, you will see that this is not like straight. And sometimes this part at the top is easier to see. Honestly, there's not too much of a difference right there, but these are two ways of seeing the same process that might be easier for some or harder for others. So pick up whatever works for you. Don't take my word for granted. And the other thing that I will suggest taking advantage of this video is that a lot of the times people are doubling items or doubling instruments. So let's suppose someone is recording here another guitar and you have your input set up to my input one, for example, and I turn this channel on and I don't need to listen to all of this, not for now. And let's suppose that I only have to record this. And remember that if you want to learn about the recording modes, because I have a small button here to change my recording modes, uh, I will link the video in the description as well. So maybe you're doubling and you get that right take and the producer or the musician or the composer or whoever says, oh, I want to double those guitars. So you create a new track and you set it up as guitar and you arm it and you set up the input as well to mono and set it up to the same track and you start recording. And this is going to actually create a problem even though you don't want it to happen. So if I go into my takes, I can see this file is called guitar slash 22 hyphen 22 and this bottom one is called 26 but whenever i go and find that file in my finder or in my folder or the root folder i will see that it's one single file called 26 22 i will see that it's one single file called guitar 26 guitar 22 and it's going to get messy because you don't know which guitar it is maybe, if it's guitar left or guitar right. In the end, probably what I would suggest you to do is maybe if this is some sort of rhythmic guitar, you might use something like this, guitar rhythm, and you have two extra channels where you start dumping in your comp and you're not making a single comp because the bass is a melodic instrument that you only have one take at a time. So maybe you name this guitar left, and this is your guitar right. So just for a visual reference, my track in red is going to be my guitar rhythm recording track that's going to create files named guitar rhythm. And I'm just going to dump these files, doubling them, not removing them by holding command or control and doubling this. So I can make a comp here or whenever I make one comp that I want and I someone says, I like that take. So I will only use that take and I say, okay, this one goes here. And I start looking for another take and I go, this one goes here. And now this one can be off and only available when recording and everything is recorded, recorded down there. Otherwise you will end up with a lot of tracks looking like this. And you will end up with a screen that looks more or less like this. And trust me, this is going to be really hard on the eyes. Even if you're using only something like this, whenever you try to figure out where your things went, where your files ended up, it's going to be a mess. This works really well for vocals, for doubling vocals, for backing vocals. For drum recording, you will probably want to link all of those tracks from the recording using the set track grouping parameters and set an arm lead, an arm follow for all of the tracks selected. And that way you can record all of them at once and you can never miss one single instrument. Those are some of the things that I would really take into account when I'm recording something. Just try to have some better practices so it's easier for you and easier when you want to figure something out. You're lowering the risk of something going wrong. If you like this kind of videos, be sure to comment, subscribe, hit that notification bell so you listen first any video that I release. Other videos on editing, recording, and some better practices of this sort. I will also be making more videos on Search if you're into, into synthesis and some interesting Ableton layering techniques apply to Reaper. So if you're into that, be sure to hit that notification bell and subscribe. Straight from Mexico City, my name is Juanchis and thanks for listening.